Hi, today we're going to be going through Blender's texturing tools and getting started with them. We'll start by quickly modeling this character and then we'll do a brief introduction to Blender's painting tools. If you want my project files to play with and review, they're available on my Patreon in the description below. But for now, let's get started. But let's prep this so that we can begin modeling. So we're going to drag this out, drag this out. We're going to change this one to the UV editor. We're going to change this one to the image editor. I've sketched a reference image, which I'm going to drag over here. I'm going to scale that out. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to add a cube and then I'm going to add a subdivision on that. I'm going to bump the viewport up to two here, and then I'm going to hit apply. Now, the reason I'm doing it this way as opposed to using a traditional sphere is that if I want to add subdivision later, this will look smooth when I shade smooth. Whereas with a traditional sphere, you have one vertice up here and you sometimes get these weird pinching lines. So I'm going to go back to front view and we're going to make this look like this little onion shape over here. So we're going to tab into edit mode. I'm going to select this vertice here, hit control plus to expand that selection, go back to my front view, and I'm going to extrude that. And then I'm going to scale in a little bit, extrude that, and scale in a little bit. Now I'm going to take this selection and scale just on the Z axis by holding S and then Z. And then I'm going to switch over to wireframe. I'm going to scale that down a bit. I'm going to turn on proportional editing by clicking this up here. And there we go. You can see we're starting to get an onion shape. Let's scale that up a little bit. Great. So that gives us a good little base to work with. Now, I want his top to be a little thinner, kind of like there. So I'm going to go back into edit mode, go into wireframe mode so I can box select all these. I'm just going to hit control minus, which will reduce the selection there. And there we go. Now I've got kind of like a little pinched onion shape there. Now I'm going to go back up here. I'm going to select that vertice, expand that. And then I'm going to extrude that down and then it'll just give us a little crevice there. And there we go. So now we've kind of got the basic shape of the onion. Let's toss a subdivision on top. So we'll just do that. And for now, we will turn that off in our real-time viewport by clicking this little button. And we will begin painting and working off of this. So first things first, if we want to texture paint, we're going to need some simple UVs and we're going to need a texture to actually paint on. So let's go here into edit mode. We're going to select everything by pressing A, press U to do this, and we're going to unwrap with a smart UV project. And we'll just leave it at the default settings here and we'll hit OK. So that'll give us some simple UVs so that we can begin painting. Now we're going to go up here and we're going to turn this into an image editor. We're going to hit new here and we'll do 2048 by 2048. You can make that lower or higher depending on what you want. I just feel like that's a, a good size that doesn't really take too long to render, but it's not so small that it pixelates everything. And we'll name this onion texture and we will hit OK. And now we got a black texture. Now, Blender will not save this by default, so if you do not save your image, it will delete it. So we're going to go to Save As, and then I just have a little textures folder here. You can save it wherever you want, and I'm gonna save that, so now it's safe. And we'll save that again because it will not automatically save later. Okay, so now we need to apply our texture to our onion. So let's click down here on the texture tab, and we'll hit New, and we'll name this Onion. We'll come to the base color. We will select that and we will hit image texture and then we will choose our onion texture. Now we're going to prep this viewport to make it a little bit better for texture painting by removing the lighting aspect because we don't want that kind of polluting our decision. So we're gonna come up here and click this little arrow. We're going to change from studio to flat. And then now we will switch to texture point mode. 
And there we go. Now we can see our texture and we can begin painting. And you can see here that just by the default settings that if I come here, you can see that everything is working and that we were painting. So I'm just going to undo that. Okay, so before we get started painting our character, I'm just gonna run through the basic tools so that you kind of know where everything is. So on here, you have your basic tools, which can be hidden and shown by T. And over here, you have the tool settings, which can be hidden and shown by N. First, you have the text draw. This is just your standard kind of drawing brush. You can go over here into texture and you can load textures and we'll save that for an advanced texturing tutorial. This is your blur. So if you have your text draw there, you can do this and it will blur. This can actually kind of run kind of slow on your computer depending on what you have. So sometimes it's better to kind of zoom in and blur there. Below that we have the smear which can grab things and smear them out which you can see working there. Again, this one can kind of run slow. It's better to kind of zoom in a lot of times when you're using it and you may have to crank the strength up. We'll skip over clone, but we'll go down here to fill and this will, as you would expect, fill your entire object with that. You can see that it didn't fill it all the way because the strength wasn't set all the way up. But if I go ahead and change the strength, you can see that it fills everything with white. So we're just gonna undo all that. We're gonna select the text draw brush and we're gonna go through some of the settings. So first and most importantly is knowing how to adjust your brush strength and size, which you can do here under the brush menu. By doing this, you can adjust the radius and your strength down here. I find that 0.7 is usually a good strength to work at when I'm painting, unless if I'm doing a full fill or drawing specific details that I want at full strength. And um, here you can change the blend modes, which are similar to your Photoshop or your GIMP blend modes or whatever you may use. But I like to keep it on mix most of the time, unless if I'm doing shadows or something, I may sometimes switch to multiply or screen. Below that, we have the color picker, which is where we can choose our colors. Switching between colors, we just press X. If you press S, you have the color picker, which you can go around and choose different colors. And then below that, you have the color palette, which you can add to by hitting this little add button. And you can also delete with those two. You can save these palettes and load them later. Below that, we have a gradient, which we can use to draw gradients with the fill tool. Fall off is brush sensitivity. So if we change that to this one, you can then see that you're going to get a hard edge. And then if we come back here, it's kind of the default soft brush. The last thing I wanna mention for this basics tutorial is that if you are using a tablet, which I have a link to a cheap one I recommend in the description below, it is an affiliate link, keep that in mind. But here you have the pressure sensitivity and you can adjust the pressure sensitivity for the strength and the radius, meaning that the harder you push, the harder the strength is going to be and the higher the radius is gonna be. I tend to leave this on for strength and leave it off for radius, but you can test both of those and see how you wanna work. Okay, so let's get started painting our character. Now, I've actually already chosen some colors, which you can see in my reference image over here, and I pulled these from Color Hunt. That's a free online color palette sharing platform online that you can pull colors from. You can mimic the colors I'm doing or go ahead and make up your own color scheme and come up with something better than I do. Now moving forward with texture painting, I'm going to do a time lapse of me painting so that you can watch kind of my process. With all the tools I've given you, you should be able to follow along at your own pace. After that, I'll pause it and we'll get back into doing the leaves and show you our approach to that. So moving forward here in painting, you can see that I'm using giant broad strokes to kind of just cover everything with splashes of colors and I'm using kind of a low strength so that I can just kind of toss things in and mix those colors to kind of get this base layer down. Then what I'm going through and doing is with smaller brushes, I'm going through and adding in the small details with the higher strength. So things like the face and the little lines going around his body and the lines going up around the top of his head to add those creases where you also see I start with a dark line and then add a highlight that kind of adds some depth. And then I'm going to go back through and where you got these little spikes due to kind of bad UVs and things like that, we can kind of clean that up. Another thing you can do to clean that up is with the brush settings. There's actually a, a spill setting, a blur setting that you can get into. And we'll get into that when we move into the advanced texturing tutorial that can also help prevent those artifacts. 
Okay, so here we kind of have the final result of the onion body here. We're gonna go back into object mode. And now we're going to create the leaves. Now we're gonna do the leaves a bit differently. So I have these leaves over here, I've created for a reference, and we painted the onion body in 3D, but we'll actually be painting the leaves in the 2D painting mode so that I can show you how to do that. So let's go ahead here. We're going to add a plane, let's rotate that 90 degrees and 90 degrees, tab into edit mode here. I'm just gonna scale that down on the X. And then let's go ahead and let's see, let's subdivide that a few times. We'll twirl this up, we'll add. There we go, now we have some subdivisions there. Now we're going to go through the same process of unwrapping this. So we will hit un, smart UV project, hit OK, leave those settings. And then we're going to create a new material for this and call this leaf. We will come over here, we will create a new texture. We'll call this one leaf texture. And we don't want this one to have a background, so we're going to select here and we're going to come down here to the alpha, hit zero, hit okay. Go back to our onion texture and let's just save this image so we don't lose that. Don't forget to do that. Come back here to the leaf texture. We're going to save this. Save there. Now we'll come over here to our base color, we'll add this image texture, and we'll choose our leaf texture. We'll go into edit mode here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to combine these two. And drag this over. We're going to go into texture paint mode, but we want to have our rectangle selected when we do and now you'll see that it's invisible because we have the blank texture over here so first let's take this and hide this by pressing H come back here and you can see that if we come up here we have this view option we're going to drag that down to paint and then now we have all of our tools over here that we had over here. So we have our brushes and our tools so we can begin painting with that. So now if we drop down our color palette and we start painting green, we come over here and go to texture paint mode, you'll see that it'll appear there. So as long as we have this set to paint over here and texture paint over here, we can see it go live. So Blender doesn't have a standard eraser. So the way we'll go about erasing these is we'll go to our blend mode and we'll go to erase alpha. We can do that and then we can just paint that away and it will delete those. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're just going to paint our leaf in here and then we will save that image out. So I'm gonna fast forward through that painting process again and you can follow along with me. So you can see here that I'm just painting the leaf texture in just like you would in any 2D program or drawing on paper. So this can be a bit easier, especially if you're learning to paint with the tools here in Blender. Now there is some distortion to account for because the texture we created is a square texture, but then we're putting it onto a rectangle plane. Now for this time, we'll just kind of look at it and eyeball it and adjust it. But for future tutorials, we'll be doing some UV unwrapping and we'll get those to be the same size. And we'll save that for the advanced texturing tutorials. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll switch this image editor over to the UV editor. And we're going to switch to edit mode over here, which will get us control over our UVs here. And we're just going to scale those in a bit. Why don't we change this to look dev mode so we can see what we're doing here. So we're just going to scale this here. And that should give us a bit wider of a leap. Now we don't want it to intersect at all, or it'll cut it off there on the edge. So there we go. Now we have kind of more of the proportion of a leaf that we were looking for. So we're going to go ahead and unhide the onion body by hitting Alt H. And then we're just gonna go ahead and place this leaf where we think it'll look best. 
I'm just going to fast forward through this modeling process here, but I'm just taking the leaf, rotating the leaf around and duplicating it to the other side, kind of getting it in a good position. And then I don't want it intersecting through the floor, so I kind of tighten it up to the bottom of the onion here. Then I use the subdivision so that it can kind of round the leaves and curve the leaves on the sides and then give them a little bit of random angles and things like that to make them feel more natural and part of the model. This helps sell the illusion that they're more than just a plane. Of course, there are more complicated ways we could do this geometry, but for this kind of low poly setup, we wanted to keep it as an image on a plane for the leaves. Thank you for watching and please comment below with what you'd like to see in future videos. If you want to grab these project files, they're available on my Patreon, which helps support me make more tutorials. I'd love to see what you create from this tutorial, so please tag me on Instagram and I may feature it in my next video.